This artificial blowhole could finally make wave energy mainstream. You're looking at the UniWave 200, which was recently deployed off the coast of King Island in Tasmania, Australia. To learn more about this deceptively simple piece of technology and its potentially wide range of applications, I spoke with WaveSwell Energy's co-founder and executive chair, Dr. Tom Dennis. We think that this will be the first technology to make wave energy commercially viable. That, that's our aim. The UniWave 200's design is inspired by a natural phenomenon, the blowhole. What it is is a cave in the rock face and as the waves come in, they cause the water level inside that cave to rise and compress or squash or squeeze that air. We have an artificial version of that. It's a, a sort of a neater chamber. When the waves enter from the large underwater opening at the front, they cause the water level inside that chamber to rise and we have a small opening that air passes through very quickly and that spins a turbine which generates electricity. This type of wave energy technology is known as an oscillating water column. They've been around for decades, but nothing quite like the UniWave 200. Normally in the past, as the wave rose inside the chamber, it pushed the air one way, and as it fell, it sucked it back the other. We only have air coming by in one direction, and that has um, shown in tests, model scale tests, that uh, it actually produces more power than, um, than any previous bi-directional oscillating water column. There's three big challenges that have so far kept wave energy from becoming a mainstream renewable like wind and solar. The first is efficiency. Is it producing enough energy to make it worthwhile? Second is durability. Can it withstand the pounding of the ocean? And third is accessibility. When something breaks, how easy is it for a crew to get out there and fix it? Here's how the UniWave 200 addresses all three. The waves that are approaching it have nowhere to go. I mean, yes, around it to the side, but they can't go underneath or over the top like uh, many other technologies. So that means that we're capturing all the energy in that wave, all the way through the what's called the water column from the surface to the seabed. And that improves the conversion efficiency uh, dramatically in itself, but of course the, the technology itself is quite efficient. The second thing is there for being closer to shore and a big chunk of concrete, with, I, I might add, and this is very important, no moving parts whatsoever in the water. Survivability is, is really not an issue because in shallow water for a start, any big waves will break before they get to the structure. And the third one is the accessibility, being close to shore and with all our moving parts above water, the water line, it's very easy for any maintenance or operational work to be done. The UniWave 200 could also prove to be a useful tool for water desalination and hydrogen production since it's already got the essential components needed for both, water and electricity. But Tom tells me what he sees as the greatest immediate potential for this technology comes from its usefulness as a form of coastal protection from erosion. I'll, I'll give you an example, the Maldives in the Indian Ocean, the lowest lying nation on earth with sea level rise and, and more frequent extreme storm events, those islands are in a, a danger of eventually going under. If a new seawall or breakwater needs to be constructed, normally that would just be a sunk cost it would return nothing and it would have some ongoing maintenance costs as well. By using this um, technology to do that same job, but at the same time produce green electricity, you actually more than pay for the, the structure itself and, and get a return from it. So it's a revenue generating seawall or breakwater. And if you're wondering how the UniWave 200 affects the marine life it shares space with, here's what Tom had to say about that there are no moving parts in the water. So there's no harm to marine life. And in fact, um, marine life view them as artificial reefs. At King Island, we do have to monitor the, the um, noise levels uh, at some distance from the, from the unit itself. But as I say, that it's a noise that's coming from up above in the, in the atmosphere, not the ocean. The UniWave 200 at King Island is the first of its kind anywhere in the world. It's expected to be hooked up to the grid in late February and expected to be generating electricity by the end of March. And much like wind and solar, as this technology scales up, Tom says it will become more and more affordable. Where we're starting at, the cost of our energy as we enter the commercial phase with this technology 
uh, that starting cost is well below the, the corresponding starting cost of other technologies, including wind and solar, when they were at the same stage. What do you think about wave energy? Do you think it'll prove to be an important renewable in the future? Are there other technologies that you think are promising that you'd like to see us cover? Let us know down in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'm your host, Jesse Oral. Stay safe out there, everybody.